everyone please get up for the concept of the day that is distribution of things right distribution of objects and it's the occupancy model like how many objects are occupied in which position so i'll, I'll introduce you to this so let's start with this discussion so we have distinct objects and we have distinct boxes in which those are to be kept okay let's start with this number of ways of distributing n distinct things in our distinct boxes such that each box is filled with okay so uh, filled with why this Sentence is incomplete because we are, I am answering this into various cases, right? I'm making different cases here. So given n distinct objects or n distinct things, and I have to place them into R distinct boxes. So boxes are also distinct and objects are also distinct. This is given to me beforehand. Perfect. Case one. So what I want to do discuss in the case one that any number of objects can go to any number uh, to to any box. Are you getting my point that any box can have even zero? or any box can have all the n. That is the possibility, right? These are the possible ways. So the situation is, read the statement once again, the entire statement with this case one. I'm reading that for you. The number of ways of distributing n distinct things in R distinct boxes, such that each box is filled with zero or more things. Each box is filled with zero or more things. So that is each box can have zero or one or two or three or all the n of them. So there is no restriction here. Perfect. Okay. Can you people tell me what could be the answer? Okay. I'm, I'm putting the answer beforehand. This is the answer. R to the power n. Can you guess it? Why? Can you guess it? Give it a good try. See, what are we distributing? Objects. So let me show you the picture. Let's say I have object O1. I have object O2. So on. I have all the objects. When n distinct objects, n distinct things. Perfect. Now tell me one thing. What are the options for object one has? So how many boxes he can approach or he can go into? So the object one can actually go into either of the R boxes. So the number of ways in which object one can be distributed is R. So for the first object, the number of ways of distribution are R. Now I'll see when I'm doing the distribution, I'll go to all the objects, right? One by one. So it is in succession. So the number of ways will get multiplied. Perfect. Now O2, I have gone to O2. So again, O2 can go to either in the first box or in the second box or in the third box or in the Rth box. So again, how many options does it has? R. Similarly, the last object, even the nth object also has how many options? It has also R ways or R boxes in which they can actually move to. Okay. So this R into R into R, how many times? N times. And if it is N times, what do I get R into R into R n times? You get this as nothing but R to the power n. That's what the answer is. You understood it? Okay, please remember, we are distributing objects. See, we don't distribute boxes in <laughs> objects, right? We distribute objects in boxes, right? That's why the thought process has to be done or made because of the objects, not because of the boxes, right? What do we distribute, right? We distribute objects, right? We distribute objects into the boxes, not the boxes. We don't distribute boxes in the objects. Perfect. So just keep that logic in your mind. So the judgment has to be made based upon the objects. So objects are making choices. Every object has R option and we have N objects. So in total, R is to N. Perfect. Understood it? Lovely. Okay. Now, um, I would like to draw your attention to the second case. And this is an interesting one. Again, so number of ways of distributing N distinct objects in R distinct boxes such that each box is filled with. Filled with what? Filled with case two, which is at least one object. Now this time every box is filled with one object. Every box is filled with one object. Okay. So empty boxes are not allowed. That's that's what my ultimate idea is. Now if the empty boxes are not allowed, what does that mean? Principle of inclusion and exclusion. Do you remember that? It's exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. What do we do? We take total number of cases, then we subtract in which we have not taken any one object. And likewise, right? We have this a1 union, A2 union, A3, so on till A n, that becomes is equal to, or that total number of ways, minus when we have A1 intersection A2, plus cardinality of A1 intersection A2 intersection A3, of like taken three at a time, taken four at a time. It's exactly the same situation here. Let me first of all give you the formula. You'll understand what I'm trying to say. So if I have N distinct objects, if I have R distinct boxes, and I want to have the situation where such that no box remains empty, the number of ways are this. R to the power N is the total number of ways minus, see, we have that A1 intersection A2, right? Or 
intersection taken two at a time. So this is exactly the same situation. So R is twin is a total possibility, right? In which it may happen that all the objects have gone to the first box, but I don't want that to happen. So what will I do? By R C one. So from total number of ways, I'm subtracting the ones in which I have exactly like one box have been removed, and I have placed all the boxes into the R minus one boxes. All the objects into the R minus one boxes. That's why this R C one R minus one is twin. But again, we'll have the concept of principle of inclusion and exclusion. So what do we do? See, this is the situation. If we include this, we need to exclude this, and if we have excluded this, we need to again include this. Can you see the alternate plus minus plus minus sign? That's what the idea is. Directly remember the formula. It's a simple one. So the number of ways of distributing n distinct objects into r distinct boxes such that at least one thing, right? Such that each box is filled with at least one thing. That is, empty boxes are not allowed. The number of ways are r raised to n minus r c one into r minus one raised to n plus r c two into r minus two raised to n and so on. So principle of inclusion, exclusion, plus minus plus minus plus. Perfect. Okay, lovely. Let's go to the next idea that we have. Okay, understand it very carefully. So initially we were doing distinct objects or distinct things in distinct boxes. Now can you read that heading carefully? Identical things into distinct objects. Now this theory is really interesting. Everyone, please be very careful. All right. Number of ways of distributing n identical things in R distinct boxes. So boxes are different, right? Boxes are different. Destinations are different. Outputs are different. But the objects that we are distributing, they are all identical. Let's say if I have ten apples, ten identical apples, I want to distribute among three persons. This kind of example, right? So identical distrib distribution of identical objects among different persons, different boxes, different rooms, different cars, anything, right? So distribution into distinct objects, but distribution of identical objects. That's what ultimately we have to do it here. Earlier the case was very simple because we the objects were all distinct, right? So it was pretty easy for us to say that like the first object can go to these uh, many number of uh, uh, boxes. Second object. Now what will happen here? Here everything is identical. The first time I have sent is that let's say I have ten identical apples. If I send the first identical apple, first apple into the box one. Second time when I say that I am sending the second apple into the first box, what does that mean? They are nothing. They are not different. See, I have identical apple. I have identical apple. This time has gone to the box one. In second time, it has gone to box two, right? Or let's say this is our box one. So first apple has gone to box one in first case, and in second case, if I say that apple, the second apple has gone to box one, is there any difference in that? No, there is no difference in that. Why? They are identical apples. If you are sending the first apple into the box one or you are sending the second apple into the box one it doesn't matter that's why the concept of distinct objects won't apply here all right so what do i need to do i have to make cases as usual so let's first of all consider the cases what is my first case please read the statement that is always there zero more thing and the second one will be what at least <laughs> all right so first one case one zero or more things now i read the complete statement The number of ways of distributing n identical things in R distinct boxes such that each box is filled with zero or more objects. First box can have zero identical object or one or two or three or four like that, right? Or so similarly for second box, similarly for third box, but the objects are identical. That's the only challenge that we have to face here. Okay, now. i am giving you the formula number of ways of distributing n identical things in r distinct boxes so that each box is filled with zero or more things that is we can have empty boxes is equal to n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 so when we have to each box is to be filled with zero or more things we can have empty boxes then the formula becomes n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 okay all right So when I want to have the distribution of n identical objects, so what will I do? Let me quickly put all those n identical objects on the floor, right? Let's say I have these n identical objects. I put them all of them on the floor. Let's say like this. So these are my n objects. I kept them on the floor. Perfect. Now I know that I have to put these n identical objects into the R boxes, right? So if I have to put them into R boxes, I have to form R groups. And if I have to form R groups, I need to put R minus one identical partition. What does that mean? Listen carefully. Let's say we have four identical apples, right? 
and if I want to distribute uh, into R boxes, then I have to make R group. Let's say if I have to, for this case, let's say if I have to make to, uh, to distribute into three boxes, let's say box one, box two, box three. Okay, all right. Now, what is the situation here? If I have to fill these identical objects into these boxes, then I have to make group. Either I can make a group of one. See, I have to make three groups. I can make a group by putting the partition. What does that mean? So if I want to uh, fill three boxes, I have to put two partitions, just one less partition. Okay, let me, let, just have a look. Let's say I put one partition here, I put one partition here. What are the groups that we have? One, two, one. One object, two object, one object. Are you getting the idea? These are identical ones, right? Okay, can I have other partition? Yes, I can have this partition. Zero, four, zero. That is also a partition. Of course it is a partition. Or can I have any other partition? Yes. We can have zero, three, one. Are you getting the logic what I'm trying to share here? Can we have any other partition? Yes, we can have the partition. When we have, um, so first one, four, zero, zero. That is also a possibility. Are you getting my point? What I'm trying to mention here that if I want to distribute n identical objects in R boxes. So hypothetically, I'll be making R groups. And for making R groups, I am placing partitions, right? Simple partition, wooden partition, or plastic partition, whatever I have. I have, let's say, pre-carved plastic partitions. So I'm keeping all those partitions. They're all identical partitions, right? Because it doesn't matter where I'm putting it, right? Every partition, if I'm keeping them, uh, every way of putting the partition will give me one way of distribution. Right. Now, did you understood why we need to have to form R groups? We need to have R minus one identical partition, right? Did you get the idea? See, if I had those four objects and if I want to make three, part, uh, three, three, have to distribute into three boxes, I'll be putting two partitions. See, first group, second group, third group. Let's say if I have to distribute them into four, so I'll put three partitions. This is also partition or the partition could be somewhat like this. One, one, two, zero. Right? So if I have to make R groups, I'll be putting how many partitions? R minus one partition. That is where I have to make you reach. And I hope you have understood it now. Then situation is I have these R minus one identical partition. Okay. Now this is what my situation. So n identical objects were already on the floor. I have pre-carved identical partitions with also uh, with me as well. What will I do? So let's say these are my partitions. Can you see those thin partitions? So I have n identical objects and I have these r identical partitions, right? Sorry, r minus one identical partition because I have to make them into r groups, right? R I have to put them into R boxes, so I have to make R groups. And for R groups, I have to make R minus one identical partitions. So I have these R minus one identical partitions. I have N identical objects. Now we have to do, we just have to arrange them. Which partition will go where doesn't matter because every arrangement will give me one type of distribution. Did you get the idea? Right, please understand this once again. I have N identical objects. I have R minus one identical partitions. I can place any partition anywhere. So if I arrange all of them, what will I get? I'll get, see, the moment I keep all these R minus one partition into this, uh, um, like the distribute among these N identical objects which are kept on the floor. So let's say on the floor we have N objects. I start putting this partition hidden, partition two, partition three, so on, so on till R minus one partition. So every arrangement of these partition among these N identical objects will give me what? One way of distribution, right? So the number of ways of distributing it will be what? The number of ways of arranging n identical objects as well as r minus one identical partitions. Exactly. What are the number of ways of arranging n identical objects and r minus one identical partition? Now you go back to the theory. When I have n objects out of which p objects are same, q objects are same, then the number of ways of arranging is factorial n divided by factorial p factorial q. What is the situation here? How many objects in total do I have? n plus r minus one. And from n plus r minus one objects, n identical objects are there and r minus one identical objects are there. The number of ways of arranging will be, total will be factorial n plus r minus one in the numerator, divide by n identical objects, so factorial n, and r minus one uh, factorial because I have r minus one identical partitions. 
Did you get the idea? If you calculate it numerically, this turn out to be nothing but n plus r minus 1. See r minus 1. This is the concept. It's a very fine concept. Pretty nice one to understand here. 